Shocking news about Rachel Notley's NDP on the eve of the Alberta election campaign. We believe that we have identified the two government MLAs who were investigated and disciplined by Notley for sexual misconduct, a secret that she's been keeping from the public for months. Notley's caucus has been rocked by accusations of misconduct, including bullying. The NDP's internal culture is so toxic that one of their female MLAs, Robin Luff, felt the need to physically leave the NDP caucus and sit as an independent, claiming that she'd been bullied and that Notley and her senior officials did not take her complaints seriously. It was quite a blow to the reputation of the NDP, which, as you know, prides itself in being feminist and a safe place for women. Other complaints emerged, too, including allegations of sexual misconduct. Notley commissioned an investigation into those cases, and she found that two of her MLAs needed intervention and refused to publicly give any details or even name the MLAs to which she had disciplined. Here's how the NDP spun it. The investigations concluded that the behavior could be addressed through education and instruction. For the people who brought the complaints forward, the issues were serious, and as in every case involving allegations of inappropriate behavior, they needed to be heard and addressed. So that was that. Nahali admits that there was a problem with sexual misconduct in her caucus, but decided to keep it a secret, including the names of those who did it. And the mainstream media, well, they just accepted it. They just took it in stride. It was a stunning message that powerful government MLAs will be protected, even if they engage in misconduct, and that any woman better think twice before complaining about the powerful friends of Rachel Notley. But if Notley's office des described the allegations as serious and concluded that there was, in fact, misconduct, is it right for the public to be kept in the dark about who those MLAs are? Don't voters deserve to know the facts before the election next month? Then voters can decide on their own if sexual misconduct was disqualifying and if Notley's handling of the case was disqualifying in its own right. Notley might not think that this is important, but voters, they might. Notley's excuse for keeping these MLA's names secret is that she wants to protect the complainants. But affidavits filed in public court documents, these public court documents suggest that there may be other reasons for Notley to have kept it a secret. The story is far bigger than originally let on. Our investigation suggests that two MLA's involved are key Notley lieutenants. We'll tell you who those MLA's are in a moment and what we've learned at court. But first, I want to give a quick word about journalistic ethics. Not everything is a legitimate news story. The private lives of private citizens are not usually in the public interest. Even public people, like senior government officials Rachel Notley herself, deserve to have a private life too. Except in the most unusual of circumstances, families of politicians, they're not fair game either. Our investigation, we learned a great deal about some NDP politicians, but we've chosen not to report most of it simply because it's not relevant to their public duties, thus it's not relevant to the public. By the way, the mainstream media, just as an aside, they don't follow this rule at all, especially when reporting on conservatives. Neither does Rachel Notley and the NDP, for that matter. In recent weeks, Notley's war room has mercilessly attacked her opponent, Jason Kenney, for living for a period of time with his widowed mother. After the death of her husband, Kenney's dad, Kenney lived with her, his mother for a brief period of time. The mainstream media mocked that personal detail mercilessly, and they even published floor plans of the house. Left-wing media like Vice they regularly out conservatives as gay, implying that Kenny is himself too. When the former conservative politician Vic Taves had a divorce, there was no public aspect to that story, but the Ottawa media loathed him, so they delighted in publishing every detail just to shame the man. Today's report will not do that. Rather, we will touch on matters that are only of interest to the public, and unlike the mainstream media, we've reached out to all of the parties involved to invite them to tell us their side of the story. Frankly, I sense that at least one of the women involved is just scared to take on the NDP government and their bullies. Her court filing suggests as much. According to documents filed at the Edmonton Court of Queen's Bench, the two NDP MLAs who engaged in sexual misconduct are Rachel Notley's second-in-command, Darren Billis, the Minister for Economic Development and Trade, and Heather Sweet, Notley's Deputy Chair of Committees and Chair of the NDP Caucus, the Government Caucus. The misconduct revealed in these documents does not seem to involve sexual harassment, but rather an affair between these two senior Notley deputies, which was cited by Billis's wife in her bitter divorce proceedings. Divorces are unfortunately common, especially in a high-stress occupation like politics. Cheating on one's spouse is unfortunately commonplace too, 
but neither of those two troubles on their own rise to the level of a public interest news story. Notley, Billis, and Sweet, well, they've stonewalled us and refused to answer directly whether or not this is the misconduct for which they were investigated, but it fits the facts as we know them. According to Notley's office, the misconduct in question did not happen at work. The complaints were not staff. And it sounds like a description of the divorce proceedings in this case, and it fits the timeline. Notley's office decided that the two MLAs in question needed, quote, education and instruction. Would a divorce on its own cause Notley to order MLAs to undergo in education and instruction? If not, what else did they do? Is it what we've uncovered in the Bill's divorce court documents? Because there's much more to talk about. Allegations made by a divorcing couple can be made in the heat of the moment, and as such, they have to be taken with a grain of salt. But Billis's wife claims that Minister Billis is a regular drug user, calling him an addict even. That was one element of the Rob Ford coverage that was actually a legitimate news story. Is it true that Minister Billis is a drug addict? We asked him. He didn't answer. Billis's wife also claims that on at least one occasion, a senior NDP staffer named Heather Mack, the chief of staff to Sandra Jansen, actually went to court on his behalf to attend the divorce proceedings in the middle of her workday. Why? Was she assisting Billis? Was she there to monitor what was said about him for damage control? Was she there to intimidate Billis's wife? We don't know. We asked her. No answer. We know that someone from Heather Mack's government office has been quietly changing Billis's Wikipedia page. That's certainly interesting. That is in the public interest. Why are taxpayers taking sides in a divorce court? It's a private matter. Or is it a government matter? What other pressure was Notley putting on women who complained about her MLAs? What other personal errands were being done with taxpayer resources and government staff? Will Minister Billis reimburse taxpayers for having a six-figure salaried government worker helping him run errands for his divorce? According to the court documents, Billis has refused to pay spousal support. Again, the matter is still before a judge, but is it not relevant to the public when assessing someone's character, especially someone who so proudly identifies as a male feminist, that his wife has to sue him for spousal support for the bare necessities? I say again, we are redacting 99% of the material in this divorce. It's just simply not relevant to the public. But in sworn affidavits filed by Darren Billis's wife, she alleges a sexual relationship between Billis and Heather Sweet in 2013, a woman who went on to become an MLA and caucus chair. In an affidavit filed at court with copies of private emails to Darren Billis and as written by Mrs. Billis's lawyer, Darren Billis stepped out of the marriage and cheated on his wife during his tenure as minister and his wife actually found out about this while she was undergoing sensitive medical procedures in 2015. This indiscretion was within the time frame in which the sexual misconduct allegations were leveled against two anonymous NDP MLAs. Mrs. Sweet now sits as an NDP government MLA, subordinate to ministers like Darren Billis, but also powerful in her own right as caucus chair. Has Notley put into place any rules for managing the relationship between Billis and his ex-mistress? As an MLA, she would naturally advocate on behalf of constituents, including from time to time to Billis's ministry. How can the public be sure that Billis is neither favoring nor disfavoring requests from his ex-mistress, including for financial or for other benefits? Is that personal relationship even disclosed to department and staff so that they can ensure that no nepotism happens? They're clearly quite close. They literally co-starred together in a short documentary movie about their election. What's really going on between these two? Sadly, shortly after Billis left his marriage and removed his belongings from their shared home, the house Mrs. Billis and her son were living in caught fire and it burned to the ground, leaving Miss Billis, Mrs. Billis and her child without clothing, spousal support, or an income. Mrs. Billis repeatedly complained to Billis that he was not paying her spousal support, even though she had relocated from across the country for him and sold her own home and given up an important business opportunity to be with him. A judge ordered Minister Billis must pay his wife support, and he didn't. Her repeated requests were ignored, and it went to the point where Mrs. Billis went to court asking a judge to find Minister Billis in contempt of court and to immediately pay her back support. Divorces can be acrimonious, complaints can be exaggerated, and perhaps nothing that Mrs. Billis has sworn in her affidavits under the pain of perjury is true. Perhaps Minister Billis is correct. Perhaps Mrs. Billis doesn't have a right to spousal support or to a share in the matrimonial home 
that is being rebuilt after the fire. Perhaps her accusations that he is bullying her and her children are all incorrect. But is it not relevant in the age of Me Too where the NDP, including Minister Billis himself, ask us to believe accusers and in fact Notley ordered education and instruction to two of her own MLAs? It's ugly. Is that why Heather Mack, the Chief of Staff to the Minister of Infrastructure, Sandra Jansen, went to court to see how much damage control Minister Billis was going to need? Why was she sent exactly? Who sent her? What did she do there? Who did she report back to? Why is the government making a personal divorce a government matter, using government time and government resources to solve a personal problem? Does Notley do this a lot? It's worth asking. Did Sandra Jansen know that her chief of staff, her highest paid, most senior employee, was involved in another cabinet minister's divorce battle? This court battle is raging on. Almost every week new documents are being filed and just last month Mrs. Billis alleged that Minister Billis should be able to pay, should be able to afford to pay her just $3,000 a month in spousal support given that he claims an annual income of a quarter of a million dollars a year. Some socialist. She suggests that if he can't afford to do that, maybe he should rein in on other spending habits, including this one. Quote, this also included being engulfed in a lifestyle of drugs and alcohol, wherein Mr. Billis spent copious amounts of money on these addictions. Mrs. Billis never had the drug and alcohol lifestyle before her relationship with Mr. Billis, nor does she have it after. Mrs. Billis has refrained from including all details of their relationship, which include Mr. Billis's drinking and drug-related lifestyle, out of respect for him and for his recruitment. Career. We've reached out to Darren Billis, to his wife, to Darren Billis's former mistress, Heather Sweet, the MLA, to the Premier's office, and to Heather Mack, Sandra Jansen's chief of staff, who ran to divorce court for Darren Billis. We've asked them detailed questions, including about D Billis's drug use, to confirm whether or not they were the MLAs whose sexual misconduct was investigated and punished, and about the appropriateness of using government resources in a private divorce case. Getting divorced, is, getting divorced is not a matter of public interest. Personal quarrels and private lives are not a matter of public interest, but an affair between two high-ranking government MLAs that leads to acrimony and apparently a full-blown investigation, well, that is of the public interest. So are affidavits sworn allegations of drug addiction in one of the most important ministries of her, Rachel Notley's government. So is government staff being sent to divorce hearings and the very credibility of so-called feminist politicians who have a pattern of mistreating women. That is news. It's news, plain and simple, at least I think. Maybe Albertans will be appalled by this, the bullying, the government involvement, the alleged drug abuse, or maybe Alberta voters just don't care. Maybe they think that this is just part of a nasty divorce and it's none of their business. But unlike the mainstream media that has kept Rachel Notley's secrets for her, we think Alberta voters should be able to hear the facts before the next election, not after. We've asked the parties involved in this dispute to tell us any facts or point of view that they think we're missing here. If they reply, we'll let you know in an update video. For the Rebel.media, this is Keen Bexty. The Rebel isn't a conventional cable news network. If you want to get the latest news stories like these, we need you to subscribe to us on YouTube. That's the red button below the video. Click on that and you'll stay up to date with everything that you need to know.